Wilson listed as quarterback one on, uh, of course, every team's got to put out these dopey unofficial depth charts before their preseason games. Uh, R Wilson listed as one, but Fields is going to start the preseason opener against the Texans. I still think they're going to start Wilson, but, uh, I, you know, if they start Fields, so be it. Like, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I know this. I think they're both talented. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. What is the ceiling for this kid? Natalie's got the money, uh, and we saw something click with him. What, what is the what is the ceiling for a Jordan Love in this Green Bay team? Deepest cast target group in the National Football League. Two stud tight ends. They're legit five deep at receiver. Seven bona fide pass target deals. Come on, man. This, 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 this guy could be a stud. Top five quarterback. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Say the under has the correct juice to the six and a half win total for the New York Giants. It's a losing season. It's a bad season in the greater New York area. Is Brian Dayball and is Joe Shane back next year? As a Giants fan, what are you looking forward to? Absolutely nothing. You're hoping like the Yankees make a long enough run so you can forget about the Giants. The early line only on Sports Grid. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! That's what champions do. Welcome in. A very happy Friday to you. It is game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri. Appreciate you stopping by here on the 23rd of August as we have a loaded slate Major League Baseball here tonight as we got, well, we, we're in the home stretch here of the regular season. Teams battling for the postseason here. Teams trying to stay afloat. We got a great one, a great series heading into this weekend in San Diego between the Mets and the Padres as the Mets are trying to cling on to their postseason opportunities here. They ended up handling business against Dylan Cease last night. They got another game coming up here uh, tonight. Joe Musgrove taking on uh, Peterson, and you still have the Cardinals and the Twins uh, going at a little interleague action today. Both of those teams trying to stay afloat and maybe just maybe the Twins can catch the Guardians, David Fest on the mound against Pallante in that one. And then, of course, uh, I think this one's going to be a lot of fun, too. Michael Walker taking on uh, Walker in the Phillies. And, boy, am I the only one that's a little worried about the Phillies right now, who all of a sudden can't seem to hit. And the reason they can't seem to hit in the second half, have you noticed that no team is throwing them a fastball anymore? That's correct. Uh, it is all off-speed pitches now for Phillies hitters. And they are having the hard time adjusting and putting the ball in play. It absolutely is worth keeping an eye on on whether or not that continues. But so far, teams have figured out that maybe forget about trying to throw the ball past them. Uh, go ahead with the off-speed stuff. And it has worked because they have been a mess. And nobody's better than Michael Walker at home in Kansas City, who was also uh, very much in the thick of the postseason race. And how many of you thought we'd be talking about the Kansas City Royals in a playoff race on August 23rd? But that is exactly uh, where we find ourselves. So 15 games featuring 30 teams uh, tonight here on the Diamond. Uh, seven interleague matchups. And, of course, still a lot of teams with something to play. A lot of teams with guys playing for contracts and for jobs next year and auditioning. So there's a little something for everyone, except for what you got going on at Yankee Stadium, which might just be a, the biggest mess of the night here, because how many people 
feel that the Yankees are going to figure out a way to blow this game against Freeland and uh, the Colorado Rockies. Let's be honest. I think we all can agree that that is probably on the table. As a $3.30 favorite, Carlos Rodon, how many of you are running to the window right now to lay three thirty with Carlos Rodon? The answer, absolutely nobody. Are you out of your mind? The total is sitting at eight, although you would think if he, depending on which Rodon we get, could we get over eight and a half Ks? Absolutely, I think we can. I don't think that would be a problem against this Colorado uh, team who is not good on the road. Everybody knows it. Kyle Freeland has nearly a nine ERA on the road this year. Kyle and Freeland is the biggest anomaly you will ever meet. Why? Because Kyle Freeland is a 10 times better pitcher at Coors Field than he is any place else in Major League Baseball. Let that sink in for a minute. Yes, that's correct. He's a better pitcher at Coors than he is any place else, and the numbers uh, bear that. So kind of crazy, uh, but that is the biggest favorite on the board. I saw that total tick down a little bit here uh, today. It was up as high as, uh, I believe, eight and a half, nine, and it looks like the under is starting to come in here. Wouldn't shock me if this thing goes off at seven and a half. Uh, before it is all said and done there. Also, the Guardians are an interesting spot tonight, taking on the Texas Rangers. Uh, one in five road trip uh, for the Guardians, uh, not good. But they do welcome the Rangers at home at Progressive Field. Avaldi going, who is clearly hurt for the Rangers here uh, tonight, going up against uh, Tanner Beebe for the Guardians. And the Guardians, listen... They need a win, and they need a win in a big, big way here. It has not been a good second half for the Guardians here. So they are going to hope that Tanner Beebe, maybe a little home cooking here, uh, will be exactly what they need here. Uh, but I got to tell you, uh, Nathan Avaldi worries me. He should worry anybody thinking about backing Texas uh, because he is clearly hurt. He has been complaining about being hurt. And yet he is gutting it out because that's exactly the kind of pitcher he is. You can see the uh, over four and a half Ks. That's kind of pricey, isn't it? For a team that doesn't strike out much in the Guardians uh, against a guy that is clearly hurt. So I uh, that is a little worrisome there uh, with that one there. But I do think Tanner Beebe is going to have an opportunity maybe to right the ship here a little because nobody can trust what's going on with the Texas Rangers and that lineup. We'll have much more on Major League Baseball coming up. Uh, Dane Martinez will drop by. We'll talk about some of these early games on the slate, talk about a couple of props he might like along the way. Plus, we do have preseason football here tonight. Are you ready for some preseason football? Who is it? Week three is what we got going on here. We saw a couple of games uh, last night. That went flying over the totals. Uh, we had mentioned it last night on In Game Live how I, I think it was 26 and 6, uh, some obnoxious uh, trend along those lines, in which all we saw was unders in the first two weeks of the preseason. While the start of the second half of the, uh, the week three of the preseason has given us uh, a couple of overs, there is some thought that maybe that continues as. More and more starters are playing, more and more starters playing a little bit longer, taking on some teams that aren't interested in necessarily playing the starters. So uh, this is kind of the do or die spot for a lot of these guys trying to make the roster, trying to make the team. Uh, it's going to start here tonight with, of course, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Atlanta Falcons. That's going to be your first game up there. Uh, this was originally four, four and a half Jacksonville on the road. And then that, as you can see, has been bet up to seven and a half. Why is that? Well, Jacksonville has told everyone starters are playing. Uh, Doug Peterson has said uh, he's going to, in all likelihood, get at least two quarters, depending on the way the game goes, out of his starters, including Trevor Lawrence. So if that is the case, they're already 2-0 and in the preseason thus far. The Falcons, on the other hand, well, we know they don't have Kurt Cousins. And there is some questions about whether or not Penix is even going to see the field once again. And this offense has not been good, folks, in the preseason. Atlanta has been absolutely 
terrible. Uh, but given the fact that we're going to see some starters play at least the first half for the Jacksonville Jaguars, I understand the move for Jacksonville at seven and a half. Uh, you got to think that Atlanta is going to try to figure some things out. They can't spend the entire preseason uh, and, and not be putting points on the board or getting the ball into the red zone. Uh, there's got to be some adjustments made here. So I do think maybe some points are coming in this game, but I wouldn't be mad if you wanted to back Jacksonville in the first half at four, I think four and a half. That's not a bad look either, given the fact that we are pretty confident we're going to get a ton of starters and Trevor Lawrence in the first half for that game. Dolphins taking on Tampa. Tampa has said they're playing absolutely nobody. Anytime I'm looking at a Dolphins game, I am definitely looking at an over. And you also have uh, 10 o'clock Eastern time tonight. Get ready for the 49ers and the Raiders, a series that has totally different meaning now than it did, oh, I don't know, a decade ago. So uh, we're going to see exactly what we're going to get here. The Raiders say they... Uh, their starting offense will not play. Kyle Shanahan says he is going to use this game as a dress rehearsal for his starters. So that is why the line is where it's at for the late game. But we'll have much more on these three preseason games for you coming up. But we're going to talk a little Major League Baseball, dive into the 15 games. We'll do it next as game time decision. Well, we're just getting rolling here on the grid. Come back and join us. Time and time again, Trey Murphy the third. Trey Murphy the third. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, this guy can absolutely ball as a three and D guy, and he's gonna take the next step. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. Hey, let's say it comes down for Matt Kuchar in the FedEx Cup ball. Let's say he doesn't make a cut and it comes down to one shot. And that's a good point. He keeps his card for the top 125 because he, he did make the jump from, I think it was 113 to 103. So he made a 10 spot jump. So he's got, you know, 17, or let's see, I, that was not good math. He's got about <laughs> 20, not a 20. Bad the Smiley Show, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest. Handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. A very happy Friday to you as we get ready for the final push here in Major League Baseball. It's put up a shut-up time for a lot of teams, a loaded 15-game slate here, and nobody better to break down these games with than our good friend Dane Martinez in the house, ready to roll here, looking forward uh, to the next couple of weeks, Dane, because it, it is quite that. It's Put up a shut-up time here, and I know last night a lot of us were asking, is Paul Skeens really going to pitch anymore? Uh, I didn't think he'd get six innings in last night. It turned out to be a total blowout. They swear 
they're going to keep pitching them. Uh, the Pirates are holding on by a thread. They're taking on the Reds here tonight. I got Falter, I've got Farmer, and I've got a pick em price. What are you thinking in this one? Yeah, if anything, I would take the Cincinnati Reds. Reds. It is not Paul Skeen's day for Pittsburgh. And to your point, by yeah. the way, Joe, I heard this also, that they are going to let Skeens go for the rest of the season, but he is not going to go on normal rest for the rest of the mm. season. So I think they are going to kind of stretch him out a little bit because they do worry about an innings limit. And I got to tell you, that NL Rookie of the Year award that used to be decided that everyone thought was Skeens, don't look now, but Jackson Merrill of the San Diego Padres, Ooh. I think is also very very live and if they kind of limit skeins at all i would not be surprised to see the voters go with the everyday player especially if the padres make some noise they're only like a couple games back of the dodgers making a run out west but it'd be cincy in this game for me tonight yeah i'm kind of with you in, in that ballpark there since your pass for me uh what the hell has happened it looks like the orioles are just running out of players uh <laughs> and then and they can't beat houston houston is just give them credit uh, but this is, I mean, the Orioles got to figure something out. I don't trust them as far as we can throw them here. Dan, it looks like they're running out of steam. The Astros look like they're playing their best baseball now, which is what an experienced team does. Do you like Baltimore to bounce back here? I like the over in this one, to be quite honest. Mm. Give me runs with these offenses. These are two of the better offenses in the American League. It's not like we've got Burns on the hill or anything like that. So when I have mid-tier pitchers and these offenses, I would take the over eight and a half. But I got to tell you the truth. The Houston Astros are a play. I think last time we talked, Joe, remember Seattle was still in first place at that point in time, yeah. but nobody was believing in them. And the Astros were still technically the favorites, even though they were down a few games to win the ALS. They have had a very nice run. I believe they now have a five and a half game lead. I actually think they keep rolling but give me the over in this one over eight and a half all right over eight and a half in this one uh all right our yankees it listen i'm just gonna give you the colorado number and if they if they can't get somewhere near this i don't know what to tell them the rockies are 18 and 48 with a minus 153 run differential on the road dane if the yankees can't win by 10 i don't know what to say in this one what do you think yeah, listen, I would think it is the Yankees, but with Rodon, I'm seeing minus 350. And oh. it's so much minus 350 on the run line. It's still like minus 160. That's where I was going to go <laughs> on the run line, but that's still 60 cents of juice. So I'm not too sure. To be quite honest, what I might do on this one, Joe, if anything, it is the Yankees on the run line if I wanted to lay that juice pregame. But what I think would be the best is to watch this one live and actually hope that the Rockies can get out in front like before an Aaron Judge or Juan Soto at bat. You know what I mean? It let Colorado mm. put up two runs in the top of the first. Then let's see where that number goes. I'm not touching this one. If anything, I'd be betting it live. But what I will say, Joe, is did you see that Aaron Jones home run prop is oh. shorter than two to one? It's less than two yeah. to one, Joe. How crazy does it have to be to actually like want to? I can't bet that, but the fact that it's like plus 190 is absolutely hysterical to me. I'm I am with you here and don't forget uh m best major league baseball home run hitters only hit one home run every uh you know nine or ten at bats here so yeah. the numbers just don't jive you bet unless he's throwing it underhand which could be here tonight uh the Guardians can they win it, it like they need a win they got to figure they, another team feels like they're running out of steam Evaldi going for the Rangers BB for the Guardians at progressive what do you think I do like BB and I do like the Guardians here, Joe, to tell you the truth. And I'm intrigued by this, what is a low total in my mind, seven mm. on the number. And don't look now, but this Cleveland Guardians offense, you know, they're known as being a contact hitting team, right? Like Quan is still hitting like 330 or whatever it is. But there has been a power renaissance in Cleveland. I don't know if you know this, Joe, but there was like construction, renovations on progressive field in the off season, And a lot of people think that that has created a wind tunnel. And some of these guardians have put in up power numbers, the likes of which we have not seen in their careers. Jose Ramirez among them. So I do think the guardians can get back. I actually think the guardians are a sneaky player. Play once we get to the playoffs the coastal elites of us all joe right we take about the al west yep. we take about the nl west or the you know the east and the west but in cleveland they have a contact hitting lineup that plays in october and they have by far the best 
bullpen in Major League Baseball, which also plays in October. I'd be worried about the Guardians. I know there's no true stud ace, but I'd be worried about the Guardians in October. But for tonight, I do like Cleveland with BB on the hill, and I would take over the seven because that's pretty low to me on the number. Like that. All right. How about no team better than the Arizona Diamondbacks in the second half? Bello, uh, they've had good results this last four or five starts here for Boston. Should be a good matchup. What do you think we're going to get here? Yeah, I'm going to the Boston starter, Brian Bello, and I'm going over on his four and a half strikeout prop. Okay. Ooh. Listen, he's gone over this number his last four starts. He's at 120 Ks and 123 innings pitch, pretty much a strikeout per inning. Arizona is a good contact team, only a 20% K rate, but that number is dramatically inflated when they are on the road, like they will be in Fenway tonight. I think Bello can get five strikeouts for the Snakes or against the Snakes. I saw. I saw flexing on there, too. Detroit White Sox. What K-prop are you looking there? Yeah, for flexing, we got to go under. I mean, I'm going under three and a half. First of all, there's no reason to not nope. fade the White Sox. Flexing hasn't won a game. Are you ready for this show? Since May 8th, he's gone under this number <laughs> in his last five starts. He's only gone five innings in one of his last six starts. I think the Tigers can get him out of there again. You can't back anything on the White Sox side. Flexen is 2-24 and 24 as a starter with the White Sox, people. Do with that as you may. I'll just leave it right there. All right, Dane, don't go in here. we got some NFL futures to talk. That is coming up next as Game Time Decisions continues on the grid. <laughs> time again Trey Murphy the third Trey Murphy the third I'm telling y'all I'm telling y'all this guy can absolutely ball as a 3D guy and he's gonna take the next step betting above the rim only on sports grid hey let's say it comes down for Matt Kuchar in the FedEx Cup ball, let's say he doesn't make a cut and it comes down to one shot, and that's a good point. He keeps his card for the top 125 because he, he did make the jump from, I think it was 113 to 103, so he made a 10 spot jump. So he's got, you know, 17, or let's see, I, that was not good math. He's got about <laughs> 20, not a 20. Bad the Smiley Show, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions on this Friday. Joe Ranieri alongside Dane Martinez here. We ran through... The baseball for you. Now, Dane, uh, this is your favorite time of year. We've got NFL, which means a ton of fantasy, a ton of future yeah. opportunities, future bets. So lay them out for us here, man. What are some of your favorites heading into the season? 
Sure, I got a few for you. This is the biggest fantasy football draft weekend of the season. And I think there's a couple of season long props out there, Joe, that you can actually get edges on based on changes at quarterback. The first one I'll give you is David Njoku. His season long receiving yards is up as high as 750 and a half. He had eight something last year, but that was heavily concentrated in four or five games at the end of the year when Joe Flacco was the quarterback. That is not the case anymore. Flacco put the ball up like 35 40 times a game he had 90 yards or more with Flacco four times he never got over 60 in any of his other games now it'll be back to Deshaun Watson Cleveland I think will return to a run heavy team and we are now expecting Nick Chubb to be back a little bit earlier than we thought Jerry Judy is now there to eat into Njoku's target share I go under the season long receiving yards prop for David Njoku similar with Michael Pittman who had a breakout season a career high last year for the Indianapolis Colts but remember Anthony Richardson the stud rookie was only there for four games then it was Gardner Minshew and he likes to sling it okay Gardner Minshew they put it up 37 times a game with Anthony Richardson he was throwing for 84 yards total this is going to be a run heavy offense as well Shane Steichen as the coach Jonathan Taylor back there they they drafted A.D. Mitchell to cut into Pittman so that is another under for me I mentioned Gardner Minshew he left from Indianapolis to Vegas, and they just named him as QB1 for the Raiders. Give me Devontae Adams and his reception prop. Joe, it's 82 and a half. The man has over 100 catches the last four years in a row. Last year, he did it with Jimmy Garoppolo. He did it with a coaching change. He did it battling injuries. Now, like I said, Minshew will be peppering his main target, which is clearly Devontae Adams. The skill set is certainly there, and I think he'll go over. Another receiver I think goes over in the AFC West is Cortland Sutton on the Denver Broncos. Mm. They're hanging his season-long receptions prop. The same thing as what he got last year. But guess what? Last year, Jerry Judy was there. Now Jerry Judy is gone. Guys like Marvin Mims and Josh Reynolds will not threaten Sutton to be the alpha in Denver. And so I think he will go back to kind of 2019 where he caught 74 balls for over 1,100 yards. We got a couple other ones. Kyler Murray, his rushing yards. He's another year removed from that ACL surgery. The number is only 440, Joe. That's 25 Mm. yards a game. Heck, Kyler Murray can get that in one drive, okay? And he is a little bit more confident. And then the last one will be Jared Goff's passing yards. This guy has finished the last couple of years in Detroit over 4,400 yards. You know they throw the ball a ton. And in a weird scheduling quirk, I don't know if you buy into this, Joe, Jared Goff is much better indoors than outdoors. And the Detroit Lions play 14 of their 17 games inside this season. I think that's good news for the Lions offense and good news for Jared Goff prop betters, Joe. Outstanding uh, stuff there, Dane. The Njoku uh, one that you let off with, I think, is is phenomenal because you're right. It was that one stretch of games where Flacco was coming in. They were still trying to vie for the postseason. They they asked him to throw it 40 times a game. Uh, What do you think the upside for this uh, this Browns team is here? Uh, Is Deshaun Watson, is he ever going to be what we what he was or is this just a pipe dream? I think it's kind of a pipe dream, but I don't think they need Deshaun Watson to be amazing, right? They've got a top three defense. And to be quite honest, I think people are forgetting about Nick Chubb. This is one of the best running backs in football. He's probably going to be back sometime in October. I think the defense is really strong as well. I think that's something of a value at plus 450. I think the Browns are going to be a playoff team this year. I can see them finishing ahead of Cincinnati just behind Baltimore in that division. Remember, they made the playoffs last year with Joe Flacco, DTR, and a bunch of other quarterbacks. Now you get serviceable Watson, Nick Chubb, you add Jerry Judy in. Yeah, I think they're a playoff team, Joe. How about the New York Jets, Dan? Because I'm hearing they're now the favorites to win the AFC East. What are you thinking, brother? Come on. If jet Aaron fan Rodgers to Jet fan. Upright for 16 or 17 games. Duel! I will show you a playoff team. Another top three defense, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson. They won seven games with Zach Wilson, Joe. Come on. If Aaron Rodgers stays upright, they break the playoff drought and get in. I never thought I'd see it. Plus 155. Unbelievable stuff. Dane Martinez.
Always a pleasure, my brother. Enjoy the weekend. Let's get ready for some fantasy football. It's coming, folks. Game Time Decisions returns after this on The Grid. Again. Trey Murphy the third. Trey Murphy the third. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, this guy can absolutely ball as a 3 D guy, and he's gonna take the next step. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. Hey, what say it comes down? For Matt Kuchar in the FedEx Cup ball, let's say he doesn't make a cut and it comes down to one shot, and that's he, a good point. He keeps his card for the top 125 because he, he did make the jump from, I think it was 113 to 103, so he made a 10 spot jump. So he's got, you know, 17, or let's see, I, that was not good math. He's got about <laughs> 20, not a bad The Smiley Show, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! That's what champions do. Welcome back in here. Game time decisions on a Friday as the hits keep coming. Thanks for stopping by here as we welcome in our good friend, Colby Dant. We've been looking in the back of milk cartons for this guy. Uh, we've been turning over every stone, and we finally got him back, Colby. It must be football season. More importantly, it must be college football season, uh, brother. Week zero uh, is here, and before we dive into a couple of those games let's take big picture here and i want to start with you in my favorite conference the the acc because it's the only time we're going to say it mario crystal ball in miami there is no excuse for them this year zero having said that florida state's not going away anytime soon what do you think we're going to get out of the acc this year you know, I think it's open. I think, you know, a lot of people say the Big 12 is the most open conference. Uh, and I would say, yeah, that's probably accurate. But not far behind that is the ACC, mainly because Florida State's lost so many starters. They only bring back, what, four on the offensive side of the ball, five on the defensive side of the ball. In Miami, you know, they continue to go out and buy everybody every offseason. <laughs> on paper, it looks incredible. Like, on paper, they should win the ACC. But I just, I have always been a skeptic of Mario Cristobal, you know, when it comes to coaching, whether mm -hmm. it was back at that Oregon Stanford game. And then last season you saw a kind of a ditto effect with the Georgia tech Miami game. So uh, I, I, they need to convince me. I like taking a shot on some of the other teams because here's another thing. These, these gigantic conferences, this 12 team format was not really like it was put together with five major conferences. The only problem is they mm. detonated the pac 12. So now you have a situation where you have 17 teams in, you know, in 18 teams in some of these conferences. So, I think you're looking for the best schedule as opposed to the best team, which might be a little bit different than handicapping this maybe a couple of years ago. I like taking a shot on some of these other teams like like the Louisville Cardinals and Jeff Brom. You saw them mm. get to the championship game year one. 
I think they've improved at quarterback. I think they've improved at uh, on the offensive line, and then they got healthier on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, the schedule, it, it, yeah, they have some tough spots, but they're in the non-con. At Notre Dame, sure, they lose that. At Kentucky, yeah, they probably lose that. But in conference, I only circle one really tough road spot, and that's at Clemson. They can afford to lose that and still make the ACC championship if they can take care of the Miami Hurricanes at home. Yeah, I, and I don't mind NC State either. Great coach, a lot of uh, returners there. Don't, they could absolutely surprise some people coming out of the ACC uh, the Big Ten, boy, oh, boy, uh, this is going to be an interesting conference. A, a new look uh, of sorts here for the Big Ten. I still think Iowa's going over their win total. So uh, what do you think we're going to get here in the Big Ten? Oh, I love the Iowa over. I think Iowa's hosting yeah. a playoff game. But I, I don't have mm -hmm. them winning the conference, though. I think the conference will go mm -hmm. chalk. I think Iowa will lose in Columbus. Ohio mm. State will will lose in Autzen. So the tiebreaker will go to, you know, Ohio State. And I got Oregon, Ohio State. This is, to me, one of the chalkier conferences in all of college football mm. to me. Where this and the Conference USA, I think, are the most uh, the obvious. Uh, I, got, I got Ohio State and Oregon playing in the, in the Big Ten Championship, and I got Ohio State beating them in a rematch because I have them losing at Autzen. But I think Iowa, if you're an Iowa fan, you don't even want to play in the Big Ten Championship. You know, you want to play right. because if you do, you'll probably lose by 40. They're, they're not as fast in the dome there at, at Lucas Oil. So I think the fact you don't play is actually a blessing in disguise because then you're probably going to be able to host a playoff game at Kinnick. The Big 12, you mentioned it, a lot of parity there. You know me, I'm a big Oklahoma State guy, so my alma mater uh, – Love uh, that nobody's looking at them, and they got a ton of experience coming back. But that is about as wide open a conference as it is, no? Oh, for sure. And I'm pretty sure uh, you you might have went to a few uh, a few frat parties with Alan Bowman, their quarterback, because he's yeah. he's in his uh, he's eighty he's in his nineteenth year. <laughs> <laughs> right? and, uh, and look it's hard to fade that honestly like this day and age these quarterbacks that are so old uh, the only the only problem is is uh utah's got a quarterback that's right around the same mm. age but i definitely like those two um i think oklahoma state schedule is a little bit harder so i'll take the utes to win it i know that's chalky I most unpredictable conference though we're basing a lot of it on like if Jalen Daniels plays, I think, you know, yeah. we don't know how healthy he is, but if he's super healthy, I think Kansas is a threat. You know, uh, I, I think Texas Tech could be a threat if they're healthy at the quarterback spot. So there's a lot of intangibles. UCF is a dark horse. I think it's worth taking a shot on the Golden Knights to uh, to win the conference. Uh, the only problem would be the potential rematch of playing Utah on November 30th and then the very next week there at Jerry's World. So, uh, but I think they're they're a pretty good team. And what happened the last time Gus Malzahn had a gigantic mobile quarterback? He won a national championship. So he got K.J. Jefferson in the portal. Watch out. Yeah, yeah I, well, Kansas, it, it, they're either going to cannibalize each other and we're not going to get anybody outside of the conference championship in the playoffs or two or three teams are coming from it. It's, it's going to be feast or famine with the Big 12 uh, this year as far as the, uh, the playoffs go. Uh, the SEC. It's a new era, man. It's a, but is it the same old, same old with the SEC this year? Well, I, I'm not as bullish on uh, Texas. I feel like as as uh, the masses mm. are. Texas, you know, they lost both defensive tackles to the NFL, and they went to try to replenish them. They brought in a kid from Arizona and Bill Norton, but or two guys from Arizona. But I, I don't know. Their pass defense was terrible a season ago, and they played seven backup quarterbacks on their schedule. Can you get that lucky again? I don't know that you can. Mm. And now that you're in the SEC, the competition's a little bit better. Uh, but I am bullish on Georgia. I think Georgia's going to end up in the SEC championship game. But I, I do think, once again, you're kind of looking for schedule. And I think the better schedules are the teams like Tennessee, Missouri, and A&M. Me, personally, I, yeah. I have uh, A&M playing, uh, playing Georgia in the SEC championship. But, uh, look, the SEC just released their tiebreaker. And I'm waiting for some of these other conferences to release their tiebreakers because it is going to get a little wacky down the stretch because you're, you're talking about with this many teams in this conference and you only play an eight-game schedule, you're talking about a situation where it might come down to like a Vanderbilt-South Carolina game and whoever wins that game and whoever's on, you know, A&M schedule or Missouri schedule or Tennessee schedule, might that might be the deciding factor. So I don't think they really thought this through when right. making these gigantic conferences. 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, I like A&M or, or potentially Tennessee to get to the SEC championship game to take on Georgia. I love a and You're right about the schedule at A&M. There's no Georgia, Alabama, or Old Miss on their schedule. And they get uh, Mizzou, LSU, and I think Texas at home at College State. So it, it, the schedule sets up. And they got a winnable game week one against Notre Dame, which if they win that, the, you know, we, <laughs> we probably won't remember it in a month. But that's that would be a huge win to start off the season. And Texas A&M with an opportunity uh, to make some hay here. Sorry, Jimbo. I uh, had to do it without you there. Uh, what about LSU here? Am I the only one thinking that they're in trouble and we're fading LSU here this year? Well, I can tell you, Brian Kelly has been a little bit of a disappointment to me. Um, yes. I know that, I guess, you know, some people will say he made the SEC championship in his first year. But, you know, I do like Nussmeyer. I don't know about the defense, but I think Nussmeyer is going yeah. to be a, 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 a good, you know, really good college quarterback. I would even play him to win the Heisman had they not won it last season. But um, I, I do think they're going to be in the mix still. I, I Like, I, they have a pretty favorable schedule, too. Now, I, I, I'm not a big Brian Kelly guy, though, so I am in that boat with you. I just think the schedule lines up with them. It's pretty nice. They get Ole Miss. In, uh, in in Baton Rouge there, and I feel like Bama and Baton Rouge. So the, the, I think their toughest road trip is to A and M. Uh, but I, yeah, I think they'll be in the mix right around that nine and three mark, ten ten and two, nine and three. They probably uh, you know will battle for that final playoff spot that the SEC gets. Yeah, a lot of the portal is ridiculous. So many guys going out, coming in, and another thing too, a lot of different coaching changes with Brian Kelly. That doesn't spell greatness uh when we're rotating ocs and defensive line <laughs> and you're rotating the coaches in and out that usually means oh uh, boy winging a prayer here but uh the sec should be good we do have of course national championship odds we'll talk some heisman some future plays when game time decisions continues with colby dant next on the grid Time and time again, Ray Murphy the third, Trey Murphy the third. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, this guy can absolutely ball as a three D guy, and he's gonna take the next step. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Hey, let's say it comes down. For Matt Kuchar in the FedEx Cup ball, let's say he doesn't make a cut and it comes down to one shot. And that's he, a good point. He keeps his card for the top 125 because he, he did make the jump from, I think it was 113 to 103. So he made a 10 spot jump. So he's got, you know, 17, or let's see, I, that was not good math. He's got about <laughs> 20, not a 20. Bad The Smiley Show, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! Champions do. 
All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. We're excited why college football is back. And so is Colby Dan joining us here for another segment, talking uh, some college football. We'll get to some of these uh, future uh, looks here as far as it goes with national championship, maybe uh, a Heisman guy or two, uh, maybe a win total. But give me your thoughts. We mentioned Florida State earlier, Colby, when it came to uh, the overall prospects of them taking down the ACC, but they got to win in Dublin tomorrow, opening against Georgia Tech, who has surprisingly given them all sorts of fits over the years. Uh, but really, uh, that I mean, how is that Georgia Tech defense stopping anything Florida State throws at them at this point? Uh, you know, I, I actually think. Uh, it's a little bit of both. Now, obviously, Georgia Tech's defense was 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 terrible a year ago. Like you know, their, their run defense specifically was one of the worst mm. in college football. But at the same time, like uh, you're bringing in a brand new quarterback uh, who's learning his third offense in three years. The reports I heard from camp was that you know they're still a little bit behind the eight ball on that. Johnny Wilson, Keon Coleman, Jaheim Bell, Trey Benson, all gone. So you only bring back four on the offensive side of the ball. I do think the line of scrimmage is an advantage to Florida State, but Georgia Tech, they went out and hired Tyler Santucci, who was the uh, defense coordinator at Duke last season, and you saw them beat mm. Clemson in the opener. I really like that that hire. Uh, the problem the problem is, is do you have the talent there right away? We'll right. see, but i tell you this, that Georgia Tech offense moved the ball last season, so I like taking a shot on the points in Georgia Tech. I, just the fact that they're playing on grass, you know, the over there in Dublin, like t that tall grass uh, for the rugby grass, you know, kind of will neutralize the speed of Florida State, I think. And then uh, they're calling, you know, I think there's like a 30, 40 percent chance of rain. I think that helps the dog, obviously. And then, uh, you know, I just think moving there's so many moving parts there at Florida State. They brought in a ton of transfers. If this game was played in October, I'd say let's lay the, the points of Florida State all day. But I think right now you got to go Georgia Tech and the points. The uh, that defensive front of Florida State is just oof, it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be interesting seeing how that goes along uh, with the uh, season. Uh, outside of that, there's a uh, when you look at the big picture national championship wise. Listen, Florida State. If you with a chip on their shoulder, you want to get back. It's a game you got to win. Uh, but who are some of the uh, the value plays you think big picture for a national championship this year? Yeah, and I think this is a fascinating college football season with the 12 team playoff. Because mm. in a way, you're just trying to convince yourself of the path. You know, yep. like the I, I don't think it's really hit the 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 fans yet. Is like the five seed might be a better spot to be in than the two seed. If you think about it, the five yeah. seed's going to get the group of five team that's going to be ranked like 30th. So if, if you are, you know, 24th or something, so, you know, you're going to be hosting a group of five at your own home stadium. And then, you know, after that, you're going to probably get the big 12 champ. So it, it, you, it's a good spot to be in. Um, yep. I, I, I think you're looking for the path. Like, obviously I would say like Oregon is one that I think is, is like, Oregon, Ohio State, Georgia, I think are the three best rosters in college football, but you're almost looking for the path, much like the NFL playoffs in a way. Um, I, I'm taking a shot on the, like, the Iowa Hawkeyes to me, I think could be in a, a good mm. spot. If, they're the, if they get a 5-6 seed, Notre Dame fighting Irish. Now, I, I was a little bit uh, more weary to jump on on them after I uh, learned about their left their starting left tackles out for the season just happened in camp a couple uh, weeks ago. But I think the Utah Utes and the Iowa Hawkeyes are worth a value play strictly. Utah would get a bye week, obviously, if they won the Big 12. Um, the problem is, can yep. they win the Big 12? But Iowa, I think, is in this thing. I think if they, even if they like, even if they have quarterback problems, I think they're in this thing. So I think that like they have seven seven year guys on the defensive side of the ball. I think it might be his best defense he's ever had in Iowa City. And then you're really just looking for the, the path. Maybe they get that five seed and they're, and they're hosting Memphis or something. And then can they can they get to – after that, do they get UCF? Do they get, you know, Kansas? Is it Oklahoma State? And then after that, you're, you're, who, do you, who knows who you play? The, I mean, I tend to think yep. it's going to be at some point Georgia, Ohio State, Oregon. But I think it's worth a dart of just taking a shot on some of these teams that you think will definitely be in. Um, you know, whether it's an, an A&M is another one that's interesting, depending what where they would get in. But 
to me, you look for some of those spots where, you know, you know they're probably going to be right around that playoff record. Like I said, there's going to be a 9-3 and three team in the SEC or Big Ten yep. that probably doesn't get in. But I don't know. I, I, I like that. I like taking a shot on, on, on Utah and Iowa. I, I, I love where you're looking at in that one there because I think it is going to be fascinating uh, with the 12 teams here. Who are some of the names you're looking at? Heisman. I've already have Ollie Gordon ticket, but you know that. Uh, so, because uh, let's face it, they're going to put up a lot of points in the Big 12. Uh, and I think that's going to be fun. But Cam Rising, we talked about him. Uh, Will Howard still hanging around at Ohio State. So, what? who are we looking at here, you think? I'm taking a shot on Travis Hunter. Uh, I, I feel like I feel like you have to be a winning team these days to make the Heisman so or to win the Heisman. So, uh, Good point. I, but he but he played so well and he missed like a month of the season last season. So if yep. if, if Colorado can just win seven games, eight games, he might put up such a such a crazy stat as far as all offensively he remember he had a game or two with multiple interceptions and he had a game or oh, two yeah. also with like over 100 yards receiving that you know we saw charles woodson get this about 25 years ago so i like that mm-hmm. i also like taking a shot on miller moss lincoln riley it's a lincoln riley quarterback always is in the heisman mix look at it yeah. over the past the past six seven years so miller moss and usc i do think they're being disrespected by the media i think they could be a team that could find could sneak into the big 10 championship if everything goes right I, I'm with you. It's amazing where nobody's talking about them. I can't wait to see how the, the Pac-12 teams doing the Big Ten and, and also in the SEC. I think this is going to be a, uh, a big learning experience. But I'm looking forward, uh, Colby, to the complete overreaction for the first couple of weeks in college football. It's where we're going to make a ton of money because everyone is going to scream, oh, this team blows. They're gonna, and then they're going to be fading all those teams that don't look good early on, completely missing the point that they're all going to look good in about three or four weeks there. So, Colby, let's cash some tickets, brother. It's good to see you. GTD returns after this. Time and time again, Trey Murphy the third. Trey Murphy the third. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, this guy can absolutely ball as a three D guy, and he's gonna take the next step. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Hey, let's say it comes down for Matt Kuchar in the FedEx Cup ball. Let's say he doesn't make a cut and it comes down to one shot. And that's a good point. He keeps his card for the top 125 because he, he did make the jump from, I think it was 113 to 103. So he made a 10 spot jump. So he's got, you know, 17 or let's see, uh, that was not good math. He's got about <laughs> 20, not a 20. Bad the Smiley Show, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest. Handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! what 
All right, welcome back in game time decisions here. Time flies when you have 900 sports get about ready to uh, to take center stage here. And uh, we are looking forward to week zero in college football. That uh, is coming up uh, well, 24 hours from now. We'll get to see Florida State, Georgia Tech, uh, get the season rolling. And then, of course, uh, this is the final preseason weekend of games week three of the preseason here we got a couple of games uh, coming up here tonight not to mention a loaded 15 game slate of mlb action getting ready to get underway in fact uh we've got a score already one nothing the reds on top of the pirates at pnc park in uh, pittsburgh there just finished up the first inning we got the Yankees uh, coming up against Colorado as a monster favorite. What could possibly go wrong with laying $3 with the New York Yankees and Carlos Rodon against uh, the Rockies? Although I will say this, the Yankees have certainly uh, turned, they've been better, uh, I would say, as of late. They were terrible for so long at home this year, so uncharacteristic, but they've actually uh, been pretty good. 15 and 8 since July 26. They've won two straight blowouts uh, over the Guardians. Uh, now the Rockies, who we told you earlier, 18 and 48 on the road this year with a negative 153 run differential when they're outside of Coors Field. Kyle Freeland, uh, almost a 8.5 ERA on the road this year. So there is no reason uh, not to at least shop the alt line, if you will, or even better, uh, maybe Yankees team total. Uh, that kind of possibility here, I think, is a uh, is a good look if that's the direction that you want to go. Uh, we talked earlier about the Orioles in Houston, and folks, uh, there is Houston, we have a problem, but not with Houston. It's with Baltimore. Uh, this team is going the wrong way. Why? Because Baltimore can't hit right now. It's become a home run or bust uh, team. The injuries are piling up all over the place. Uh, Hunter Brown going for Houston here tonight. They are just looking for any arms at this point that they can count on that are actually healthy for Baltimore. And my goodness, uh, they are not. And I mean, that they've lost three of their last four. They're hitting a buck 67 over the last week and a half. So this is not uh, a good Baltimore team right now. They seem to be running out of steam. And yet, Houston is one of the hottest teams in Major League Baseball. They've won 12 of their last 15. But they are also one of the best under teams this season. Keep that in mind. Four of their last five games have gone under the total uh, here, and eight and a half, I think, is what we saw going on there. There's no reason for me to believe that Baltimore is going to tee off on Hunter Brown out of nowhere here. If it ain't broke, I ain't fixing it. 12 of 15, I like them to stay hot here. I like the Astros to get it done, again, at a pretty decent uh, price here. And then, of course, uh, keep an eye on this Blue Jays and Toronto game. I think it's going to be fascinating. And the reason I think it's going to be fascinating is because Toronto has absolutely dominated. And I mean, dominated the angels over the last uh, couple of, uh, I guess the last week, uh, when you look at what they have done, I think they have outscored the angels in just absolutely epic uh, fashion. I think the total was, 24-8 to eight over the last uh, four straight games that they have played. They did play last week in Anaheim. They, of course, played last night in uh, Toronto there. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The run line has worked for Toronto. They finally started hitting the ball after the All-Star break, after we thought everybody was going to be traded. Uh, they won 5-3 last night at the Rogers Center. And there is no reason to think that they can't win on the run line once again at plus money here tonight. So those are a couple of the games getting ready. Uh, opening pitch uh, just after the top of the hour in a couple of minutes. Of course, we'll have much more on the rest of the Major League Baseball slate coming up. We also got to talk FedEx Cup Championship. We got some golf coming your way. As, uh, let's face it, a big surprise today 
uh, with one golfer who was at the top of the lead leaderboard uh, dropping out. Apparently, back issues uh, that has changed everything, especially right now at the BMW Championship. So we got a lot to discuss. Don't go anywhere. Come back and join us. Another hour of Game Time Decisions is coming up here on The Grid. Trey Murphy the third. Trey Murphy the third. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, this guy can absolutely ball as a 3D guy, and he's going to take the next step. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Hey, what say it comes down? For Matt Kuchar in the FedEx Cup ball, let's say he doesn't make a cut and it comes down to one shot, and that's he, a good point. He keeps his card for the top 125 because he, he did make the jump from, I think it was 113 to 103, so he made a 10 spot jump. So he's got, you know, 17, or let's see, I, that was not good math. He's got about <laughs> 20, not 20. About the Smiley Show, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! That's what champions do. Welcome back in off and running another hour here of game time decisions on the sports grid network. Joe Ranieri. I want to thank you so much for stopping by as we get ready for CFB people also known as college football week zero is upon us. Craziness is upon us and nobody does crazy better than Joe Lisi in the house uh, straight. He took the, uh, he took uh, his private jet from Palm Beach uh, right back so he can make this show in New York. Always a pleasure to see you, uh, Joe. Joe, it's, uh, are you ready for craziness? Because that's what we got coming here. Yeah, we wet the palate. It's always a pleasure, Joe. And I wish I took the private jet. You know, may, maybe if these games come out this weekend and we hit a 12-team parlay, you know, possibly, you know, maybe we'll take the, the, the private jet and rub elbows with all the elite out there in West Palm. But, but yes, I am ready. It is a little, it's a little bittersweet, though. You know this. I mean, week zero, typically we get seven or eight games. You get straight through that through that Hawaii game at night, and even though Hawaii's playing, they're playing Delaware State. Or do, what's the latest? We mm-hmm. get an APB. Did they actually make it to the island yep. after missing that trip ten and a half hours? Uh, in regards to that, but it, it's only four games, and the the big one kicks off at twelve o'clock. So by three yep. thirty, four o'clock. I mean, I'll be ready for dinner. Yeah, it, it, it's a uh, it's an appetizer. That's the way I look. Like you're at Kachina. It's like an appetizer. You get that for Then you got to wait for the main course uh, to come down, which is only a week away. But it does kick off at noon. Florida State, Georgia Tech. I am trying to, for the life of me, Joe, I cannot figure out how this line went from the summer at 13 and a half, 14, 
and now we're down to ten and a half. Like what what am I missing here uh with this Georgia Tech and Florida State game? Well, I think you're seeing both, you know, you're seeing short money come in number one, right? You know, taking Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech a very good team against the spread, seven and two against the number against ACC opponents. And let's not forget they started very fast as a double digit underdog last year against Jeff Brom and Louisville pushed them to the limit and lost that game. Haynes King was phenomenal in regards to the first five games of the regular season. He averaged 296 passing yards per game, six touchdowns, 16 touchdowns, four interceptions, and then really tailed off even though they made it to a bowl game. And then you're seeing on the flip side, a team in Florida State, even though they were 13-0 in the regular season, they got snubbed for the college football playoff. A lot of new faces on the offensive Mm. side of the ball, including DJU. I didn't think you're seeing the smart money not buy into the Seminoles, not just yet, but I still think that defense carries them, Joe. They held opposing quarterbacks to 48% completion percentage. They have two starters back. They do get some transfer talent that comes in, and I do think they win this ball game convincingly. I'm seeing 11 and a half now here in New Jersey. Okay, so do yeah, it there was either the biggest head fake because it got down as far as 10, and now the money is starting to come back in on uh, Florida State. Uh, there is an awful lot of folks, uh, Joe, that I have talked to that are really high on SMU in the ACC this year. They think they could absolutely cause some damage. Are you buying uh, SMU? They're taking on Nevada. Uh, it feels like it's a game they're going to win. Are they going to win by 900? But what do you think of their overall view here on the season? Well, their, their win total, Joe, is a seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, depending upon the book mm-hmm. that you shop at. But, you know, schedule lines up. They do get Florida State yeah. September 28th. Uh, if both Florida State and SMU are undefeated heading into that matchup, You could say that will be the biggest game in SMU history since potentially, Mm. what, 1982 with Craig James and Eric Dickerson? Mm -hmm. I mean, just think about that for a second. But they do have their starting quarterback that comes back, Preston Stone, 32 touchdowns, six interceptions. They can run it for over 200 yards, very balanced offense. But Rhett Lashley has built the defense. They have six starters that come Mm. back. Uh, they held opposing offenses to only 17 points per game, 28% third down defense. You know, they're, they're going to be very solid. Again, I think they're an eight or a nine win football team, depending upon how things play out. But I still would take Nevada, even though they were terrible and atrocious last year. Brennan Lewis is a an experienced quarterback, and you give the team six months in preparation. I would still take the 26 and a half in terms of that. I think they make it close and they make it ugly. Give me uh, Nevada with the points and the under. Yeah, lastly, and that uh, eight of their last 13 road games to the under, that is a good defense, SMU. They pride themselves on it. So uh, I'm with you there. I think that's going to be an interesting kickoff for SMU season. What about the Montana State-New Mexico game coming up here, Joe? This is another one where... Uh, Some folks are divided here. I see a lot of people looking at grabbing the points here. Are you buying that? I am going to grab the points because I'm a buyer of Bronco Mendenhall, the new head coach Mm. in New Mexico. They can run the football. They average 192 rushing yards per game, 5.2 yards per carry. And you got the FBS offensive line going up against a smaller FCS defensive front. You got to believe that Bronco Mendenhall will look to pound the rock and keep this game close. The game is at home. I'm going to take the points, Joe. Uh, you know, I'm going to take New Mexico uh, on the money line as well and calling for the upset special. That's not to take away from Montana State. I know they're a prolific offense, but they're coming in. And Bronco Mendenhall as an underdog, I like to typically take him with the points, especially with four or five months in terms of preparation. New beginning since taking over, and he walked away from Virginia. So give me the points yeah. with New Mexico. I always love it when coaches tell us, oh, I got my wife wants me to leave the game. I, uh, you know, this is it. Yeah. yeah. 12 months later, it's like, I'm back. I'm coming. Yeah. New Mexico State, here I come. I'm ready yeah. to roll here. Uh, <laughs> I love it, though. It's a, one, of the truly, uh, one of the truly good guys, too. I know that program's going to be, I'm with you, in good hands uh, moving forward. Uh, we were talking earlier, uh, Joe, about my Big 12 here, where I think everyone is going to cannibalize one another. I do think it's a wide-open conference this year. A lot of Kansas love. You know who I think is going to win it all. Uh, but what do you think of this uh, this Big 12 this year? Utah for yeah, you? 
Yeah, no, you know, t- t- typically Utah's a basically a 500 road team over the last mm. five or six seasons. So that's a cause of concern, especially from the logistics. We saw four teams come into the conference. Only one made a ball game in terms of UCF last year. So I think it's going to be very difficult for those Pac-12 teams not to take away from Cam Rising. I know you're a big buyer of Ali Gordon and Alan Bowman, and I love what they did last year. They couldn't cash me the ticket, though, Joe, in terms of the Big 12 mm. championship. I had a 60 to 1 and a 48 to 1, and they couldn't even give me the hedge in regards to that. I love what uh, Mike Gundy's done, but I'm going to back Joey McGuire. They get nine starters coming back. They get another four that come in in regards to the transfer portal. You got uh, Brennan Morton that comes back, Taj Brooks, quarterback and running back. I think this team could be lethal. Look at their schedule. They have the potential to start 5-0 and or 6-0 and and really run the table. They could score with anybody if that defense comes around. 18-1 to now. They opened at 10-1. to It's now up Oof. to 18. And nobody's buying them. I'm going to take a shot with Joey McGuire because of the value. All right. Are we fading Michigan, Joe? And it, you almost yes feel like you no. have to, no? Yes and no. <laughs> love them. Go ahead. Lo- I'll yeah. tell you this. I love them week two, and I, I don't care. I'm jumping on the three and a half against Texas. They have a 22-game home winning streak. But then yeah. I might I might sell them when, when Lincoln Riley and USC come to town. That line is already eight and a half, nine. I'd be willing yeah. to take Miller Moss on the road in terms of that type of ball game. So I still think they're a nine or a ten win football team can sneak into the college football playoff but again if they beat texas and ohio state show they're going to be there so yes and no i think yep. 10 and 2 is realistic but i do still think they cracked the college football playoff at plus 120 yeah Iowa's still going to win eight games or i don't know why they keep putting iowa's number at seven and a half i you know they're going to win eight games. They're always going to win eight, nine games in that conference. It's uh, it's unbelievable that nobody gives Ferentz any credit. They do realize the kid's not calling plays anymore, right? Does everyone understand? He's gone. Uh, let's go. Fingers crossed. Defense wins James. Uh, Joe Lisi, the craziness has begun, brother. We appreciate it as always. Game time decisions will continue after this. Time and time again, Ray Murphy the third. Trey Murphy the third. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, this guy can absolutely ball as a three and D guy, and he's gonna take the next step. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Hey, let's say it comes down. For Matt Kuchar in the FedEx Cup ball, let's say he doesn't make a cut and it comes down to one shot and that's he, a good point. He keeps his car for the top 125 because he, he did make the jump from, I think it was 113 to 103. So he made a 10 spot jump. So he's got, you know, 17, or let's see, I, that was not good math. He's got about <laughs> 20, not a bad The Smiley Show, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! What 
All right, welcome back in on this Friday. Game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. So in addition to college football, preseason NFL, Major League Baseball, let's not forget uh, the FedEx Championship, the road to it anyway, uh, happening right now as the BMW Championship underway in Colorado. And who better to talk to than the man in Colorado right now, Keith Stewart following it here. And Keith, um, boy, that was a little strange. I did not see Matsuyama bailing with a back injury. Was there any talk of that yesterday, that this might have been a problem, that he was going to have to pull pull out here? Joe, good afternoon from Colorado, and let me tell you something. That is so on brand for Hideki. I, I don't even know where to begin. Last year, he was outside the top 50. He grinds his way to get to the BMW Championship, right? In there in Chicago, he plays a round that he WDs. He's out. This year, he wins in Memphis. He comes here as one of the favorites, right? One round, comes out the next morning, I'm out. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, this is the world of Hideki. You know, he, he in DFS, he's over 15% owned. I mean, people today were really, they were breaking TVs, definitely. Laptops, they were going against the walls. Everybody's upset. But it's Hideki. What else are you going to do? You know, last night after the, after the rain delay, two-hour rain delay, Hideki mm. comes out. He throws a dart on 18. He's one stroke behind Keegan for the first round lead. He throws an absolute dart on 18 to two feet. Misses the putt, makes par, oh. and finishes one stroke behind Keegan. It's it's just on brand for him. No one can explain it. It's unbelievable. I mean, poor if I know or some guys that had those tickets and and really oh. thought he was uh, he was the dark horse and yikes. But listen, that means it gave an opportunity uh, for a couple of other guys. And Adam Scott had no problem uh, walking right through that door. What what happened? What kind of round was this year today? Oh, I tell you, his 63 this morning was scintillating. And, you know, over over two days, the broomstick has been cleaning up over 232 feet of putts. I'll say that again for you, Joe. 232 feet of putts for the Australian. Unbelievable. Wow. And I'm sure – now, I know you're not going to be surprised, but maybe some of the viewers are. Read the line. We had Adam before the week, plus 5,500 oh. in the newsletter. Exactly. Boom, baby. We are yep. riding this guy. He's got a three-shot lead. Keegan Bogey, the last. Keegan's look strong, though. A little worried about the kid, Ludwig Obert. He shoots 63 as well today, uh, he, and he did it in the afternoon. Now, he's been a little bit shaky with his driver and some of his ball striking in the last month, but he seems to be back. He has something figured out. As I came down here, coming down, I had to walk past the range to get to this spot right here where I'm doing the shoot. And he's out there practicing, and the guy's working for the Highway Commission. He's throwing absolute stripes down the range. So I'm a little worried about Obert, but you know what? We're fully vested in Scott, and we like where we're going. You know, a cool thing about Adam Scott this week, he's one of two players in the 50-man field mm. that played in the International when it was a PGA Tour event from 1986 to 2006. He played in 2000. It was his first ever PGA Tour event in America. How about if this mm. guy wins – 24 years later what a cool story that would be absolutely crazy it's an interesting course too uh keith obviously the the alta is it a long course it's kind of hard to tell someone's saying that the, the course is forever but you're in the altitude now it, it, you know it the scorecard comes out at 81 30 and everybody gets sticker shock and it's like hey everybody right. pump the brakes for a second right <laughs> read the car max you know I, the fact is is that you reduce seven and a half percent it gets down to about 7,400 yards. 11 of the approaches are downhill, so that takes off more yardage. And then, of course, you know, th these guys, they're just bombing it out here in the thin air. We've got four par fives. It's actually a, it, it's, it's somewhat of a birdie fest golf course. Today it proved that yesterday was a little windy. So we only had 21 guys under par. We only had about 175 birdies in the field of 50 guys. Today, less wind. Scoring average was two under par for the 50 guys. 34 guys were under par. A lot more birdies were made, 217. So you're going to see more scoring over the weekend. Tomorrow's weather conditions going to be very much like mm. today. And especially if you go out early, you could go deep on this golf course. No doubt about it. What wins it, Keith? What, with what you're seeing, what kind of number are we looking at wins this thing? Well, the beginning of the week, Vegas set the number at 23 and a half. I think that's a little <laughs> bit aggressive at this point. I think if you get to 20, you're the winner. You know, I... Saturday is going to be moving day. Everybody's going to be going low. But then when we get to Sunday, you always get that leaderboard gravity. 
People start coming yeah. back to the field. So I'm thinking that tomorrow we're going to see a lot of scores in that 66, 67 range. You know, the guys out front, Scott, Obert, those guys, they're going to have to push themselves to stay out in front because, you know, there's some big guns back there. Cantley, we've got Wyndham Clark back there, you know, the hometown hero. All these guys are coming after. The Canadians want to get on that President's Cup team. Connors and Pendrith are back there. All these guys can go low. These are the top 50 players of the year. So I think tomorrow you're going to see some low scores. And then when you get into Sunday, maybe more around 72 under par is where people are sitting. And if you get to 20, I feel like at this point, you're in a good spot. Yeah, Xander didn't do himself any favors here today. But big picture here, Keith, what are we looking at at East Lake here? Like, who's winning this whole thing when it's all said and done? Well, I was interested to see how much focus that Xander and Scotty were going to put on this week. Basically, no matter what they did, they were going to go into East Lake one and two. And with the staggered start, start there with the scoring, you know, Scotty's going to be in first and he's going to have the most amount of strokes. Xander was going to be second. So between the elevation and all the grinding and, and trying to figure out who's going to win this week, those guys don't really have an edge. And we saw that today. They didn't really grind or other players like like I talk about the Canadians trying to make this President's Cup team. It means a lot to them. You know, somebody, Adam Scott, it means a lot to him to win this tournament. Keegan Bradley, Captain Keegan Bradley, he gets in the top 50. He's in all the signature events next year. So he's going to play with all his possible Ryder Cup guys. That's a really big deal. So these guys are pushing. I think that when we get back to sea level and we get to that swamp there in Atlanta, East Lake, right, I think that Scotty and Xander are going to be back. You know, they're going to know their yardages, and they're going to be full throttle going into a newly renovated East Lake Golf Club. Yeah, your Scotty back tightness, soreness, is that, is he everything okay here? It, it, all good, right? Yeah, so yesterday he said he was having a little trouble getting through the ball. He was a little stiff. Today, afterwards, in the flash interview area was where I am right now. He said, no issues whatsoever. I feel great. The back is not a problem. All right, well, that's good news because we don't – don't pull a Matsuyama, okay? We got enough guys holding <laughs> tickets right now, screaming and yelling, Keith, so I don't want nothing to do with that. But – we got plenty of great golf still to come here. Brother, I appreciate it. Enjoy the tournament this weekend, man. We'll talk to you again, of course, uh, pretty soon here as Game Time Decisions continues on the grid. Time and time again, Trey Murphy the third. Trey Murphy the third. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, this guy can absolutely ball as a three and D guy, and he's gonna take the next step. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Hey, let's say it comes down. For Matt Kuchar in the FedEx Cup ball, let's say he doesn't make a cut and it comes down to one shot and that's he, a good point. He keeps his car for the top 125 because he, he did make the jump from, I think it was 113 to 103. So he made a 10 spot jump. So he's got, you know, 17 or let's see, I, that was not good math. He's got about <laughs> 20, not a 20. Bad The Smiley Show, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest. Handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Are you ready? Let's go! That's what champions do.
All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri. Certainly appreciate you stopping by here as we are off and running on a loaded 15-game slate in Major League Baseball tonight. A couple of scores here as the Reds uh, still on top of the Pirates, one nothing, top of the third in that one. The Yankees and the Rockies, no score, top of the second right now. We do have... Some scoring going on here in Boston as Arizona opened up the game, uh, getting to Bellow rather quickly. All sorts of runners, two runs in now. It looks like Boston finally got out of the inning, but it's 2 nothing. Diamondbacks heading to the bottom of the first. No score with the Cubs and the Marlins. Uh, the Angels and the Blue Jays, we told you earlier, we really did like uh, the Blue Jays bats uh against the angels over the last uh, four games they have completely demolished the angels on every front uh no reason not i think to lay the run and a half and plus money here tonight on that one and uh the orioles and astros are underway we've got no score in that one and uh we were looking forward to the braves and the nats that is just underway no score in that one there is the braves have chris sale on the mound Mackenzie Gore going for the Nats and of course Chris Sale trying to do everything he can to keep the Braves hopes alive and maybe take down a Cy Young award when it's all said and done the Guardians at home uh one two three bottom of the first the Rangers and the Guardians no score there heading into the top of the second inning games coming up in the 8 o'clock hour here tonight, just uh, after the top of this hour, Tigers, uh, White Sox, Montero taking on Chris Flexen. We told you Chris Flexen, 2-26 and 26 as a starter for the White Sox. There is in no way, shape, or form you can do anything but fade Chris Flexen at this point. Uh, the Royals at home taking on the Phillies, and we had talked about this game earlier. I Listen, Michael Waka has made us a lot of money uh, over the season here, certainly in the first five, uh, taking on a Phillies team right now that just can't seem to score any runs. Taewon Walker, who is kind of like hitting batting practice against, going up against a Royals lineup at home. They are much better at Kauffman Stadium than they are any place else. This is a tough spot here for the Phillies, who just can't seem to get any runs on the board. I do like the Royals' chances early in that game. The Twins and the Cardinals is another one coming up. David Festa, who I love, uh, the rookie for the Twins. I think this kid is an absolute stud. He got lit up his first two starts this year, and everyone was like, oh, this guy is terrible. Oh, you got to get him get him out of here. But quietly after that, uh, he has been lights out for Minnesota, and uh, Pilate is going, and he is running out of steam. For the Cardinals, uh, the Twins are the better hitting team. The Twins have more to play for. I trust the bullpen. They had off yesterday. The Cardinals had to play another game against the Brewers yesterday. Uh, they had to also use uh, the, all their high-end bullpen guys yesterday. So I think the Twins are a really good look in this game. And those Brewers are taking on the Athletics, who quietly will not go away. Savali taking on Sears in that game here tonight, we told you how important the Padres and the Mets series is. Musgrove back on the mound for the Padres, taking on Blackburn of the Mets. Mets handled their business uh, easily for Severino last night against Dylan Cease. They're looking to do the same as they are trying to secure one of those uh, final playoff spots in the National League. Well, they're going to have to do it by beating the teams in front of them, and the Padres are one of those teams. Giants Mariners late night. Is it one of those fired coaches systems that our friend here at the network, Scotty Wetzel, loves to talk about? Well, they fired the manager last night. I'm not sure how that's going to help them hit any better in this one. Bird song for the Giants. Castillo at home for the Mariners, but uh, might be worth maybe a, uh, a Mariners uh, run line here to be able to get it done at home finally for the coach that they just ended up getting fired, Scott's face. So congratulations, uh, Seattle. And then late night tonight, uh, Rays-Dodgers. That'll be 
your 10 o'clock Eastern time. Miller on the mound for the Dodgers. Alexander going bullpen game for the Rays there. Feels like we might get some Dodger runs in this one here. We also have some NFL preseason football getting ready to kick off here at top of the hour. We'll talk more about that. Of course, college football and everything else. We've got you covered. Game time decisions continues on the grid. Ray Murphy the third. Trey Murphy the third. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, this guy could absolutely ball as a 3D guy, and he's gonna take the next step. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Hey, let's say it comes down. For Matt Kuchar and the FedEx Cup ball, let's say he doesn't make a cut and it comes down to one shot. And that's he, a good point. He keeps his card for the top 125 because he, he did make the jump from, I think it was 113 to 103. So he made a 10 spot jump. So he's got, you know, 17, or let's see, I, that was not good math. He's got about <laughs> 20, not a bad The Smiley Show, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri. Appreciate you stopping by as... We've got plenty of Major League Baseball underway here tonight. Yankees have uh, Jazz Chisholm back in the uh, lineup here tonight, which is good to see here. The Yankees uh, still at the plate, bottom of the second. Still no runs in this game against uh, Colorado, which, if we're all being honest, is a little little bit surprising here. But uh, hopefully... Uh, they'll get the runs going. Uh, also, we still have a one nothing game, Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. The Angels have scored first against Toronto, one nothing in that one. And it didn't take long for Boston to get back into it. 2-1 now, uh, the Diamondbacks on top of the Red Sox here. Houston, by the way, no score in their battle against uh, the Nats, uh, against, I'm sorry, uh, against the uh, Baltimore Orioles, who have those City Connect jerseys on, in which nobody can figure out uh, what city exactly it is that they play for. We did say NFL preseason football tonight. Three games, one of them underway already, and that is Jacksonville. Didn't take them long as they took the opening kick uh, down the field against the Atlanta Falcons, scored a touchdown, and we kind of expected that given the fact that We already knew that Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, uh, Bigsby, all of the starters uh, are set to be played at least uh, the first two quarters uh, from what we understood here, that uh, they were definitely going to get some work as a dress rehearsal here. So the Jags taking advantage of it, while Tyler Heineke is under center for the Atlanta Falcons right now. And what a shock. 
the Falcons can't score. Falcons haven't been able to score all preseason long. And outside of the initial opening drive by uh, Taylor Penix, I think in the first game in which he started, he got hurt uh, in the second game early. So we didn't see much of him after that. And it has not been a great offensive showing by the Atlanta Falcons at all in the preseason. And right now they are being shut out with about two minutes left to go in the first half. Coming up here, though, we do have the Miami Dolphins uh, getting ready to take uh, center stage against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That one's going to be at Raymond James Stadium. And then the late night game, which is going to be interesting. The Raiders at home taking on the 49ers. And from what we understand, Shanahan has said that he has every intention of using this as a dress rehearsal again tonight, while the Raiders have said they have absolutely no interest in playing any of their starters, which I think is why that number is uh, where it is right now. Brock Purdy is expected to get uh, extra time here with a full cast of his starters surrounding him in weapons. So uh, we'll see if maybe they can get out in front early in this one, much like the Jacksonville Jaguars. And we said, hey, not a bad look. First half for Jacksonville, laying four and a half. Well, if we're going to get extended time for Brock Purdy and the starters of the 49ers, it would only make sense, I think, that the 49ers defense also going to get some looks there for the starters. Why not? But I will say this, the 49ers defense in the preseason has been awful uh, across the board. Not good. Tons of missed tackles. Um, this is going to be a game, keep in mind here tonight in week three, where there's going to be an awful lot of players that are trying to make the roster here. Uh, so these are all final decision uh, games here this weekend for NFL teams. So I would imagine there's going to be a lot of defenders, a lot of guys on the defensive side of the ball tonight across the board this weekend that are going to show up and show out here and try and uh, secure that final spot on the roster. So this should be extremely interesting, uh, these three games here tonight with Miami and Tampa coming up in just a minute. And so we welcome in the guy that will be covering all of the preseason football games here tonight, in addition to a bunch of Major League Baseball, Dave Sherapan in the house wearing the Arizona, Arizona gear here tonight. Were you yeah. taking Arizona over Boston tonight as a road yes. dog? Yes, Diamondbacks and over tonight. That's what we're, we're on. We're going to be on. And again, it's kind of a thing. Uh, for Wetzel, because, you know, he's a Boston Red Sox guy, and it's been working. Um, when mm. I wear a team like he doesn't know it's coming, and then, you know, he rants and raves a little bit about it. But, yeah, I liked Arizona tonight. I was surprised it wasn't a pick -em. So, plus money, good, over, good, let's hope. Um, there's a lot of good baseball, Joe. Uh, mm. I don't know how much, um, you know, are you into the preseason like this week? Just the uh, – no, no, just the start because we have uh, – I do think there's some angles to be had in week three because you still have teams like tonight. Shanahan said we're playing everybody first two quarters. Right. Jacksonville said we're playing everyone the first half. And yet Atlanta's like, well, we're not playing anybody. And the Raiders are like, we're not playing anybody. So it's, you know, yeah. take those – kind, take that knowledge and, and run with it as best you can uh, early on. But – Week three is all about the, the guys trying to make the roster, right? So you know the effort's yep. going to be there in the second half of these games. So that is the most interesting uh, part for me. And have they decided on a quarterback with your Raiders? Yeah, it's Gardner Minshew. He's going to yes. start the season. So, but he ain't playing the night. <laughs> so he, he ain't the nope. field. No, <laughs> absolutely not. No. Um, <laughs> it was great to see you. Uh, I saw you last week in yes. Vegas, and we had a nice conversation in person. I forgot how good-looking you are on the screen, and when I saw you in person, mm. everything was working all together. Sorry I didn't get back to see you mm. in time Sunday before you left, but um, that was a lot of fun. We were talking about it yep. then, and I want to bring it up now. The under train in the preseason is done, right? Like, we got yes. the two games yesterday went over. 
it, it ain't going to happen again, like where you get the games this week and you just blindly bet under. You come out 14-2. and two. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking over for at least two of the three games tonight in the preseason. Yesterday, both games went over. I don't know. Do we get any more scoring in the Jacksonville and the Atlanta game? That's the one that I was looking at maybe would be under. But Miami and Tampa, I think, leaning over. And San Francisco and oh, Raiders yes. from minus three to minus nine. Current numbers, minus yep. nine. Like a six-point yep. move on a side is incredible. Yep. All because that, you know, Purdy's playing – a lot, uh, and the starters are going to be playing a lot, and that's the whole thing with some of these coaches. They're taking that this final preseason game as an opportunity as a dress rehearsal, basically, uh, and the starters are playing out, which is why I would think take advantage of guys like Mike McDaniel, who are also uh, have said that they're going to play some guys in some key spots here tonight. Right. And I do think the Bucks and Todd Bowles said that um baker mayfield uh is expected to start here tonight so we're going to get some extended looks with a new offensive coordinator in tampa i would imagine points are coming in that one but atlanta to your point is terrible offensively this priest they are awful man like they even, awful they ain't even letting Penix go near the field like they ain't even no trying. it's one of those situations where i think they've already made a lot of the decisions I think there's teams that are still making decisions. And yes. if you're still making decisions, you're probably going to get, you know, that maximum effort and that more first team type reps. So, yes, you know, we'll we'll, we'll come back after this. I, I got to ask you about the, the Pittsburgh situation and Russell Wilson oh. and the thing with the Lions tomorrow. I, I'm beside me. I, I don't know. There's two teams in the NFL that haven't named a starting quarterback, one being the Steelers and two being the New England Patriots. And Peralt and I were doing BVB today, and I said, who's your quarterback? He said, who's your quarterback? It was like the Spider-Man me. Mess. Terrible. That's why uh, Pittsburgh fans can't have nice things. Uh, it's because you do this to yourself. You yes. always create these ridiculous controversies. It makes no sense. Absolutely none. But we'll talk about it. See if we can't come up with a solution for Mike Tomlin as Game Time Decisions continues on the grid. Time again. Ray Murphy the third. Trey Murphy the third. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, this guy can absolutely ball as a 3D guy, and he's gonna take the next step. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. Hey, let's say it comes down. For Matt Kuchar in the FedEx Cup ball, let's say he doesn't make a cut and it comes down to one shot, and that's a good point. He keeps his card for the top 125 because he he did make the jump from, I think it was 113 to 103, so he made a 10-spot jump. So he's got, you know, 17, or let's see, uh, that was not good math. He's got about <laughs> 20. Not a bad The Smiley Show, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! That's what champions do.
Oh, bet the Yankees. What could go wrong as a $3 favorite? I mean, what could they're playing Colorado? Well, Colorado's got second and third here with uh, two outs threatening to score in a nothing nothing game. That's what could go wrong. Joe Ranieri alongside Dave Sherapin here, game time decisions on the Sports Grid Network. Uh, Cincinnati, by the way, has opened up the game against your Pirates since you were talking yeah. Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah. Paul Skeens and company got it done last night. Not so much yes, here no. tonight. Five, no. nothing. Uh, no. And I don't even think they're in the fifth inning yet. Yankees are trying to get out of this jam. Uh, and I do believe the Orioles have finally scored. One nothing in that game. Cubs and Marlins won a piece there, Dave. Four nothing Rangers over the Guardians. Uh, the Guardians can't buy a win, even at home. Uh, not a great situation uh, for them. Uh, although Houston looks like they just tied it with an Altuve home run. So it looks like it's uh, it's 2-1 Houston now. Sorry, runner on second there. Uh, let's talk Pittsburgh. And A, uh, Paul Skeens last night got the job right. done. They gave him run support. Uh, but they're still saying they have no intention of shutting him down. Uh, good move, bad move. Uh, what are you thinking? Listen, if he keeps pitching like this and he's okay, I'm good with him pitching. I'm good with him shutting him down if they realize, all right, we're out of it. We're going to – if they shut him down for contract reasons and stuff, it doesn't seem fair, but that is a real possibility. I just – like the rookie of the year thing is becoming a mm. real issue. There's a lot of people talking about Merrill winning it for San Diego, and he could. Would it surprise me if he did? No. He's an everyday player, and it has a huge impact right. on a team all season long. It's going to make the postseason. I'm officially, I mean, it's done. It would take them to win every game the rest of the season. The Pirates are going to win every game the rest of the season. Probably not going to win tonight. Um, it's not, it was a fun summer. They're not making a postseason. So we moved on to football and talking about, you know, having nice things. I mean, you see the division odds for, for mm -hmm. AFC North. I mean, it's not good. It's uh, the plus nope. 750 to win a division is um, that's for usually reserved for teams like Carolina or, you know, New England this year, although New England mm -hmm. is a lot higher. Um, yeah, this is, this, this has, it might be a long late fall winter into, I mean, I don't even know the Penguins are going to be good. So no. Pittsburgh sports have been, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a while since it's been like this, where all the teams are maybe due for a rough season. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like the Skeens has been the most positive thing in Pittsburgh, for the Pirates in Pittsburgh for a mm -hmm. while, and yep. I love it every time he pitches. I'm dialed in. Yesterday, minus one thirty felt like an absolute gift, and yep, I, I don't know how many other games are going to win during the week. <laughs> Well, who's? I mean, listen. You brought it up. You, you know, Pittsburgh's got Detroit tomorrow, one o'clock. Their final preseason uh, game here. And who is your QB here? Uh, is it Fields? Is it Wilson? They, are you confident with either? Uh, it, it feels like it probably should be Russell Wilson. Uh, but I, mm. how long a leash does he get? I, I you know, that's the other Great question there. Question. Great question. Right? Uh, Tomlin's been talking about he's going to decide based on what he sees on the field. Well, they're not making it easy. No one's really right. doing the job that much better than the other. The thing that, that happened last week in a preseason game is that Russell Wilson couldn't avoid sacks. He's holding the ball too long, and he can't get away. Rather than throwing it and making a mistake, he holds it, and it results in a sack. The Steelers aren't good enough to take sacks. And they need to have mm -hmm. sustained drives. Fields can move, escape pressure, which looks like they're going to have a lot of pressure. They got questions at running back now. I don't know. I, I If I was picking right now, I would pick Fields because I think I the upside is better. And you just say to Russell, like, look, we know you're a veteran. We know you've never been a backup. Right now, we need you to be the backup and be a good teammate, and you're going to get an opportunity if yep. things don't go well, if you start with Russell Wilson and they start out bad, then you throw fields in saying, oh, fix everything. 
And I don't know if it's even possible at that point because the back end of the Steelers' schedule is the most difficult schedule in the NFL. Mm -hmm. The last yep. seven games are against all playoff teams, against the division, and you know, playing the Ravens, Bengals, and Browns all within the last eight weeks. Six division games are in there. And then Kansas City on Christmas. It's a mess. Yep. Yep. It's beyond messy, actually, but they got to run the ball. That's the bottom line. If they can't run the ball and you need Russell Wilson or Fields to run around and try to complete passes, you're probably looking at a uh, a rough season here. But I do think if they can establish the run and run it consistently, they should be okay, mostly because the defense is going to be okay. But look defense at that number, be plus 750? I mean, yeah. plus 750? Yeah. Yeah, Are we really it's, it's, betting against the Steelers like that? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to win. They always, I hope. I hope they they contend for a playoff spot. But I mean, if I was to bet make the playoffs, I would bet no. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs at this point. I mean, I don't even know who they're going to finish above. I, I actually think there's <laughs> more questions with the Bengals than the Browns, and I really think the Ravens are set up perfect. I think the Ravens are going to win that division. The favorite, that number's right. So yep. I, I like Baltimore right now. I got a lot of guys that I've talked to that like the Bengals. And I have a few, like the Shrew, my buddies and stuff that, that are mm -hmm. Cleveland Brown fans that are saying, watch Deshaun. He's go, it's going to work now that he's been there. And oh, I can't wait. It's always been the wild card with the Browns. So, I mean, right. honestly, I mean, that's that's always been the wild card is that could he shake off? When would he shake off the rust and become what he was when he was with Houston? If that happens and you get Chubb back, I, anything is possible there. But I got to see it before I believe it. Uh, in the meantime, 14 nothing Jags over to Falcons now in the second. Tampa scores in the opening drive, 7 nothing on Miami. And we'll take a look at that late game when we get back on Game Time Decisions here on The Grid. Take the next step. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. Hey, let's say it comes down for Matt Kuchar and the FedEx Cup ball. Let's say he doesn't make a cut and it comes down to one shot. And that's he, a good point. He keeps his card for the top 125 because he, he did make the jump from, I think it was 113 to 103. So he made a 10 spot jump. So he's got. You know, 17, or let's see, uh, that was not good math. He's got about <laughs> 20. Not a bad lot. The Smiley Show, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! All right, 
right, welcome back in here. Game time decisions on the Sports Grid Network. Joe Ranieri alongside Dave Sherpan. He is getting ready to uh, take over with Scotty Wetzel coming up in just a few minutes, top of the hour. He'll get you all caught up with Major League Baseball as well as the preseason action right now. And a couple of great uh, late games, uh, Dave, tonight on the Diamond. And there is yep. no doubt I'd be willing to bet big money that your partner here, Scotty Wetzel, coming up is going to have some sort of fired coaches trend, and he's back in Seattle tonight. What do you, What do you think? I um, I would almost bet everything I have that Seattle <laughs> is not only the black cloud play of the night, but it's probably involved in the same game parlay. If it's yes. not them, it's San Diego. Um, yep. I would be worried yep. about San Diego a little bit, though, and you know we'll lead up into that game against the Mets. The <laughs> Mets are the hottest team in baseball right now. A couple wa- walk off mm. win this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, man, oh man, I I know he's going to have it. I I I you I know it has to. Theories. He a hundred percent. He has so many theories and so many things yep. that yep. um yeah I. I, it's I happening. Would, I would bet everything. I think Seattle wins it's tonight. Though. I do. I, I do think, too. I, I I do too. Yep. Castillo, yep. the new manager change, all of that working. It's actually a kind of a cheaper price. You know, yep. San Francisco on the road, a lot of swings, swings and misses. Yep. So it makes sense. Um, before I go, Phillies plus money against yep. Kansas City. Uh, wow. You trust them? I. Do you trust them? I... Phillies have With the worst Walker? record in baseball since the All Star break. I can't believe it. It's scary. It's, it's it's happening now again. They have a nice lead, and they've had a nice right. lead. So it's one of those things where this is that little lull, and right. um, we'll see. But I, that might be one of those plays. A lot of people will see it and go, "Oh, the Phillies plus money." And then you're yeah. wondering why in the third inning when, you know, Walker gives up four and two and two thirds and you're trailing, you know, four to one going, why yep. did I take the Phillies again? Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Wetzel exactly. will have it. I, I, I will be very surprised if he does not have. Oh, he Seattle. will. Yeah. And I will absolutely now have to fade him because of it. Get out of here, Dave Sharpan. Things we'll are, see you hey, here with things are bouncing black cloud all off. over the place. Things are just black bouncing all over the cloud. place. Lines, everything. We got a yep. lot. We got a lot going on here tonight. We'll see you here in a couple of minutes with uh Wetzel. Appreciate it, my man. All right, we do have some updates for you too. Major League Baseball right now. The Yankees refuse to score runs. Uh, so, so much for laying $3 against Colorado. It's still nothing, nothing in that game, top of the fourth inning. Uh, we did get a home run back. It looks like the Orioles, a solo shot off for Hunter Brown against the Astros to make it a 4-2 game now. Bottom of the third inning in that game there. So, it does look like runs are coming here at uh, Camden Yards as Baltimore tries to claw their way back into that game. Still 2-1, Diamondbacks over the Red Sox. Uh, the Braves are on the board finally, one nothing against the Nats. Coming up here, though, Tigers, White Sox. It is fade flexing night here, folks. Fade flexing with the White Sox. 2-26 and as a starter for the White Sox. I would assume that's going to be 2-27, and even against the Detroit Tigers. And you heard Dave mention, I'm looking forward to the Royals' first five against the Phillies. I like Waka over Walker. I do not trust the Phillies' bats at this point. I also like the Twins at home on a off a day off yesterday, taking on the Cards, who had a brutal series against the Brewers, had to play yesterday. So I do like the pitching matchup. And I like the advantage the Twins have at home. The Brewers are in Oakland taking on the Athletics. Not an easy game there with Sears on the mound for Oakland. And pretty good bullpen uh, right now for the Athletics. So with Miller back in action and ready to go. Don't forget Mets Padres here with Musgrove. His, uh, what, second or third start off the IL. We'll see what he has here. And can the Padres bounce back? against the New York Mets, who beat them pretty soundly, and Dylan Cease last night. You, so you heard Dave talk about the 
fired coaches as uh, Scott Cervais was fired yesterday by the Mariners. Uh, will they bounce back against the Giants? Everyone seems to hope so. And the Dodgers and the Rays feel like we might get a few runs there. That's your late game here tonight. But don't go anywhere. Game Time Decisions will be back again tomorrow. But In Game Live Prime Time is next here on The Grid. Enjoy your Friday. We'll see you again soon.